to Wednesday. Sports day is tomorrow, and things have really started to heat up at school. Mrs. Bosch has been making everyone in our homeroom get to class half an hour early, so we have extra time to put together our strategy. And she's been getting paranoid about what the other classrooms are doing to prepare. So today she lent let Davian Mills up to the ceiling so he could spy on Mr. Drew's homeroom next door. It turns out that ceiling tiles aren't strong enough to hold a person's weight. The homeroom Mrs. Bosch is most worried about is Mrs. Epstein's because she's got a bunch of athletes in her class and one of the kids is jesse range who stayed back in eighth grade twice just so he could compete in sports day one more time but the team i'm most nervous about is mr ray's class because that's the morning detention homeroom and on sports day i'm sure those guys are gonna play dirty to make matters worse, we found out we're going to be competing with grown-ups in this thing. The janitors went to the vice principal and said they wanted to put together their own team because they deserve a day off just as much as students. I guess that's fair, but the bathrooms have been getting pretty grotty ever since they started spending all their time training. And now the lunch ladies are getting into the act, so the cafeteria has basically turned into a gymnasium. The homeroom teachers are getting pretty spooked, so they started trading kids to improve their team's chances. Mrs. Mr. Esper sent the fastest girl in our school, Ava Hollis, to Mr. Joy's class, and he got Thomas Chef's who's apparently a specialist in the spawn toss. All this trading has got Mrs. Bosch thinking about making some moves of her, of her own. She even gave me the job of scouting kids from some of the other homeroom to see who we should recruit for our team. That's why it's done when Mrs. Bosch trained me and two other kids for Jesse Rage and drew in a pack of dry eraser markers to close the deal. Yesterday was sports day. Thursday. Yesterday was sports day at school and it started off with some controversy. Before the first bill, Mr. Ray gave Jesse Rage detention just so he could steal Jesse for his team. So that meant Mr. Ray's team was totally stacked, and the rest of us didn't stand a chance. Before sports day kicked off, Mrs. Abstain gathered our team on the playground to go over strategy and make some last-minute adjustments. But I still couldn't figure out why she wanted me and those other two kids instead of Jesse Range. I was only signed up for one event, which was the three-legged race. My partner was Madison Bro, who's about a foot taller than me, which made things kind of awkward. But when the race started, I finally understood Mrs. Epstein's strategy. She didn't train for me because I am fast. She traded for me because I was light. Me and Madison took first place, and our team was off a good start. But we had a big setback a few minutes later when Marcelo Romero twisted an ankle in the sack race. It turned out the lunch ladies had left some potatoes in a few of the sacks, and I'll bet that wasn't an accident. Marcelo was supposed to run the 50-meter sprint next, and all the other kids on our team were in the middle of events. So Mrs. Abspain told me I was going to have to fill in for him. I got second to last place because I was still kind of bashed off from the three-legged race. But I can't really run 
fast unless I'm motivated. I'm the fastest I've ever run was when I got chased by Roderick after he stepped in dog poo and I laughed at him. I guarantee you if someone had been timing me that they would have clocked in a cheetah speed. The only reason I didn't get the last place in the 50 meter sprint was because as soon as the race started, Jesse Range fell flat on his face. And when that happened, I figured he must have tripped over his shoelaces or something. But turns out he got paid to take a dive. And no one found out it. Vice Principal Roy hadn't caught him red handed after the race, accepting his payment behind the school. Jesse didn't want to get suspended, so he gave up the kids who were in the betting scam. And those guys had a whole gambling operation running out of the media room on the second floor. The rest of Mr. Ray's team was cheating too, but that didn't surprise anyone. Those kids had stored their water balloons in the cafeteria freezer, and the only reason they got caught is because George Rison knocked Mikey Ardola out cold with a bad draw in the balloon toss. Mrs. Bosch team won beanbag bingo, and that put them ahead in the standings for a while. But then Mrs. Mr. Cho's team had back-to-back -back victories in the water bucket relay and the sponge toss, so they took the lead. lid. The janitor's team started moving up in the rankings and they probably would have taken the top spot if Mr. Washington's arm hadn't given out during the wheelbarrow race. The final event was the tug of war and it came down to Mrs. Mrs. Bosch's team versus the lunch ladies. I thought Mrs. Bosch's team was going to win for sure, but the lunch lady outlasted them thanks to a solid job of entering by Mrs. Frawley. When we got back to our classrooms after the competition, we were all bummed out that the cafeteria ladies were the ones to win the day off from school. And we were nervous because we heard the janitors are going to have to fill in for them during lunch. But I guess the school knew it was going to be an ugly scene. So right before the last bell rang, Vice Principal Roy made an announcement that everyone was getting Friday off. I was excited about having a whole day where I didn't have to do anything and was looking forward to sleeping in. But as soon as mom found out about my day off, she'd be wanting to schedule. I was in a bad mood all day. But mom was really, really chatty. She wanted to know about sports day and if I had fun. So I told her the truth, which was that it totally suck. Mom said the reason I've never had a good experience with sports is because I've never been part of a team. But I told her I was on a team for sports day and I've been on a bunch of other sports teams too. So I figured maybe she just blocked out those memories just like I wish I could. But mom said what she's talking about is being part of a real team where everyone has your back. She said some of her happiest times as a kid were when she played sports in middle school. Mom said that what's great about being part of a team is that you can learn how to work together and you can use those skills for the rest of your life, especially in your job. That sounds a little corny to me, but I guess I don't really know how grown-ups act when they're at work. Mom said she wanted me to give team sports one more shot and if it doesn't work out, she won't bug me about it anymore. So I told her I'll think it over but really I'm just hoping she forgets in a day or two. 
I don't understand why people get so wrapped up in sports because it seems to me there are no important things in my life. If you can throw baseball at 100 miles per hour, you'll make millions of dollars and kids will have your poster on their wall. But if you're the person who ends up curing cancer, you'll be lucky if you get a pat on the back. I've always wondered how sports got started the first place. In ancient times, people were always at war, and I guess they decided they needed a figure out way they could settle their differences without killing each other. So someone came up with the idea of a sports as a more peaceful solution. But over time, sports evolves, and nowadays you got team mascots and cheerleaders and professional athletes. I've only been to a, one professional sports match in my life, and that was when my dad took me into the city to watch football game. To be honest, I don't remember much about the game itself, but I do remember everything else about that day. Dad didn't want to spend money to park near the stadium, so we ended up about a mile away in a muddy field. He broke out his portable grill and we cooked burgers, which was actually kind of fun. But I drank way too much soda on our way back to the stadium. I knew I had to find the bathroom or I was going to wet my pants. Dad didn't want to stop at one of the portal laws because the line for those was too long. But I told her I didn't think I could make it all the way to the stadium. So I begged him to let me pull over. I had to wait 20 minutes in line and finally... It was my turn, but I wish Dad had given me a little advance warning about what those things were like inside because I would just have held it. It was a smart move making that pit stop though because when we got to the stadium, there was another long line for security. And we missed the whole first quarter of the game waiting to get in. When we finally got inside and found our seats, there were some guys sitting on them. And it took forever to sort that out. And I don't know why they even bothered to have seats because no one was sitting in them anyway. And most of the people in our section were too big for somebody my hate to see around. Since I couldn't see the field, I had no idea what was happening. And Dad was too wrapped up in the game to tell me what was going on. Eventually, I realized I could see the game if I just watched it on the Jumbotron, which is this giant screen that hangs high above the pitch. Whenever there's a pause in the action, they turn the cameras on the fans. They had this thing called Fanners of Game, and where you could win a prize by acting crazy when they put you up on the screen. And some people were really going for it. I knew there was no chance of me winning Fan of the Game if I was behind a bunch of people. So during a timeout, I stepped into the aisle and really hammed it up for the cameras. But I guess it was... I was embarrassing that, so he gave me some money and told me I should go up to the corn course and get some sacks and a souvenir. I spent my money on a popcorn and one of those giant foam fingers. But when I turned to walk away from the souvenir stand, there was a load of noise that shook the whole stadium. Apparently, when the home team scores, they shoot off a cannon. But... I wish that had warned me that my hype happened because I seriously thought we were in danger. After I was sure the coast was clear, I went to find Dad. 
but I couldn't remember which section we were sitting on, and that was the one who had our tickets. I started to panic because there were eight, 80,000 people in that stadium, and everyone looked the same from behind. Plus, the game was tied, and the fans were too distracted to help some lost kid. Luckily, an usher saw me wandering around the concourse and told me to the child finder station. They asked me a few questions about who I was and where I saw my father, but then I was so shook up I could barely remember my own name. The next thing I knew, I had a camera in my face and they put me on the jumbotron. Then I realized this was my chance to win fan of the game, so I made the most of my opportunity. The good news was that our team won in the last second. The bad news was that Dad didn't get to see it because he had to come and get me. And believe it or not, I did win fan of the game and we got two free tickets to the next match. But I don't remember going to another game after that, so I think that must have taken Roderick. What really stuck with me about that day was how they tried to keep things entertaining for the fans. And I think our church could learn a few lessons from the professional sports experience. First of all, when they introduce the press and auto service, they should dim the lights and play some loud music because that will get everyone hyped. Another thing they could do is have a mascot to make the service more fun for little kids. Sometimes you need to break things up to keep people energized so they could put in a halftime show. And there are all sorts of crazy stuff you could do for entertainment. But the biggest upgrade to a church experience would be if that they added a jumbotron. For starters, it would help peop the people at the back feel like they were closer to the action. They could even have a random draw to let the people who came in like to get a seat at the front. Plus, they could use the jumbotron to encourage people to be a little more generous when they pass the donation basket around. I've got a bunch of other suggestions and I actually took the time to write them down. I, but I guess the people who run our church must be pretty busy because so far nobody's got back to me. I was really hoping mom would just forget about making me join a team.